Hi, everybody. Welcome. Jonathan here. Jonathan Wrights is my name. Thanks for joining us for the June All Network call with uh, with me and with Bill Woolsey. Bill Woolsey is, uh, of course, the founding leader of 5.2, and we are working through these months leading up to Wiki 15. We are working through the seven steps to start that Bill wrote about and released at uh, last year's Wiki conference. Now, let's just, let's just start the conversation this afternoon, Bill, on this whole idea of there being seven steps to start. Is, uh, it, it, is that all there is to the process, or is there more to getting something new started to reach new people? Uh, well, that's, there's certainly more than that. I, I just try to put those seven steps or the, all the aspects into those seven buckets. Uh, but there's definitely more than that. I think you have to always remember what God has put inside of you and where is your where's your ultimate passion, what you're trying to do. So anytime I sit down with somebody, before we even start talking about the seven steps, I really just want to get to understand them and why in the first place are we having this conversation? What's driving you? And uh, really trying to discern uh, how that is coming from your relationship with Jesus and who Jesus is first and foremost. You know, I, I love that reality that, that yes, there is a process to starting something new to reach new people for, for God's kingdom. But bottom line is as, as systematic as, and as intentional as you can be with a process, it's going to look a little bit different for each individual person. Um, now, now there, yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that's, and that's part of what we're really driving at in 5.2, Jonathan, is that Jesus, especially as we try to connect with those apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic people, Jesus has placed something in you uh, that he is calling you to do, calling you to start, and we want to pull that out. But we, it really begins with this discerning a kind of relational uh, starting point, I guess you could say, that we get to know you and really hear your story. Now, now, how much variance do you see? I mean, because the topic for today's call is planning, is, is you know making a plan and implementing a plan. Uh, how much variance do you see in the in the plans that are, that are springing up across the network for for things to get started that 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 is not directly traced to uniqueness of the individual involved in the starting process? So, you know, is is that the main reason? Uh. If I understand your question correctly, uh, I would say there are, there are a lot of varieties in what uh, the, the model or what the uh, start's going to look like, but there are some pretty basic principles that, that we would want you to go through and to talk about, especially in this planning uh, process. And I, I listed some of that out for you in the book that, uh, that I put together as far as uh, what you know what we would want you to tell us about just kind of bring, bring this up here uh, we would want to tell you you know about the who and the where uh, tell me about the why uh, tell me about the what to the in that future and then tell me once again about the why just checking motives because the I know I spent a lot of time on that with people the values that that's the why part but I think it's really really critical as we start things for the kingdom that because of our sinfulness, because of our brokenness, we're constantly uh, putting ourselves under, we're submitting ourselves to others, and we're just checking our heart motives in this whole process. But there are some principles, there are some steps uh, that we want you to cover cover in this, but what it's going to look like, your uniqueness, and frankly, you may even tackle those uh, planning steps. Uh, you know, you may go backwards to forwards, you may start in the middle or whatever, but we want you to cover them uh, as you do. You know, and that and that's a great question. That, that that actually was the first thing on my list. Is you know, you lay out these 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 pieces of the planning process, and it looks sort of like you could follow them in a very specific, preordained order. But do you have to? Can 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 you do them in 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 any order? Uh, obviously, uh, you know me. Uh, on one hand, uh, I, I kind of come from an engineering background, and I do believe there's a, a logical nature to how I've laid them out. At least okay. it's, it's very logical to Bill Woolsey. But at the same time, uh, I know you're going to kind of start with where you are, and then we would want to say, okay, let's, let's maybe take a step or two back or a step or two forward, and again, making sure you hit them all. So, so whether or not you start in the order, that I suggest, hey, that's your call. You're going to do what you're going to do anyway. But if you're brand new to this, fresh into this, 
then, then let me just start you in this question kind of process and we'll go from there. All right, we're going to go nuts and bolts through through some of these things, but uh, b bottom I thought, line, I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say we're going to go nuts, but never mind. Yeah, no, no, we'll we'll, we'll go nuts and bolts through uh, through the entire <laughs> planning process. Uh, uh, you can't do one without the other and, and have it turn out well. Uh, but but why is planning so important? Quite honestly, I'm sorry, I missed you on the last part. Why is planning so important? Uh, I think it's important from the sense that, or not think it's important. It's important from the sense that if you're if you're going to start something of significance, there are a lot of moving parts in whatever it is you're starting, and as as you start a new endeavor, there are a number of things that you're only going to get one opportunity to make that decision. Mm. Uh, it goes back to an old adage uh, a buddy of mine said, gosh, 15, 20 years ago now, you only get to spend a dollar once. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a financial economic guy, not my background. And I remember standing on the curb outside of his house. Uh, he had just made a commitment financially to this ministry. And he told me, I've never in my life. Uh, and, and then he said, and, and I, I remember this, he said, Bill, you only get to spend a dollar once. So as you and as the leadership are moving forward in this ministry, I, I just pray that we are wise in how we spend those dollars. Now, part of how you, or, or paramount to how you spend those dollars is your plan for how you're going to be executing your ministry. Mm. Uh, and that's just one instance of you're only going to get to make that decision one time. So planning and thinking before you just go leaping off the cliff uh, will help tremendously in uh, moving your ministry forward the way that you want to see it. You know, that, that sounds, I, I hear stewardship. I hear uh, managing, you know, the, the faithful response as you're, as you're talking there. So, so, so planning has a direct connection to faithfully living out your mission, it sounds like. It, it has a, de a, a direct connection, and because uh, so much of, of the process of planning, and by the way, you know, this chapter in the book could have been uh, six books, right? Or it could have been just double-clicked on uh, ad nauseum. Uh, and so today is kind of just you know highlighting some of the uh, skimming across the mountain mountaintops there. But uh, so much of it has to do with resources. And it has to do with what, what Jesus has put in at your disposal, what he's put at the disposal of the people that he's called uh, and to follow you in this endeavor, what he's put out in the community. So it, it truly is a resource uh, allocation, resource management process. Uh, and it's, it's knowing, it's thinking through what it is you're being called to do with some methodical nature so that as you take those steps, uh, you can see some of the most effectiveness of, of, of your work. Now, now you just, you just, you just said a dangerous word, you know, especially uh -oh. for the, for, for the sacrament. You, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, well, especially for the sacramental entrepreneur type who, uh, who is ready to get going. Uh, you said be methodical. This sounds like a tension to me between, uh, you know, wanting to get going, wanting to be action oriented. One of the very values that five, two puts out there but being methodical, how does that balance fit? Uh, how does that balance fit? I think there, I would say there, there's, a, there's a wisdom from Proverbs in the sense of uh, you as, as an entrepreneurial person uh, have this compelling desire to act and to do uh, and to cause uh, but also from a proverb standpoint that you're wise and you have counselors in that whole process. And so, again, the planning is methodically thinking through, if I make this decision, I spend this dollar this way, uh, I, I uh, take uh, our group and we'll... ...in the future. Or if I make... If I make this decision, what is it disallowing me from making in the future? Mm. Uh, and so it's, it really is just thinking it through st strategically, uh, gathering those people that God has called into your, in, into your team, onto your team, and really wrestling through 
so that uh, I believe as that happens, you're actually increasing the confidence, you're increasing the, the uh, certainty so that when you do act, when you take that leap, because you're going to be taking quite a number of leaps throughout the time, uh, you're taking a leap with as much confidence as possible in a startup situation. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, there's a great line in the book that 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 you uh, you put out. Uh, you you kind of challenged us with. It says plans like coffee require percolating. What does that What does that mean? It means there there is a time. There's a runway here where you are mulling and praying, and and I can't say enough about the praying. You're simply praying. You're you're thinking, you're discussing, you're trying out different scenarios, uh, you're verifying that the way you see the community is the way others see the community. Uh, you're really just letting uh, those plans kind of stew, percolate is, is the word that I chose in the book. Uh, you're, you're letting them sit, uh, you're prodding them, you're poking them, you're checking them to make sure, again, Hey, before I'm going to take that leap, this is the way I see the flight going. Uh, do you agree with me? Or what am I missing? Is there some mountain out there that, because I've never flown this way before, I just don't even know that's sitting around the horizon, whatever it may be. Yeah, it means that you let them, uh, you let them sit as you discuss and as you pray over and as you discern uh, what it is that you're going to do. I think in the book I, I referenced something, and this was this was uh, back in the. Uh, in, in starting of, of Crosspoint, and actually even the starting of 5.2, but especially in starting Crosspoint, this was in the, kind of the pre-computer uh, type days, but just had files and files of things that I liked, things we liked. I encouraged the team to say, so mm -hmm. what it is that as we're going to launch this ministry that, that as you have been a part of ministries over the years, you said, you know, this was a, this was a wonderful thing, or this is something that I'd rather not repeat. It's kind of like when I talk to couples who are going to get married, you know, uh, the family you came from, what do you want to bring with you? The family you came from, what would you not like to bring with you? And uh, the same thing then as you're coming up with those plans or that that look, uh, that future that you believe God's calling you to. You know what I love about the, the whole illustration, both of the percolation kind of idea, but also of the of the couples getting married is, is you're bringing things into the planning process that are going to be changed in the implementation process. You know, as, as, as you make a pot of coffee, you start with water, you start with a coffee filter, you start with the grounds, and the grounds and the filter are definitely changed, and the water, it, maybe not in a, in, a, in, a, in a real positive or upbeat way, but the, the water is the thing that gets, that gets uh, infused with what the other elements bring to the table and becomes this delicious beverage that we look forward to every single morning. I think in planning and implementation, people are also changed and ideally for a uh, for, for for a positive delicious way moving forward so so, so there, there's something to be said for that whole change in, in the implementation process as well and and I think early on unless you're a solo artist which uh, again if you read the book I I'm just not even close to there uh, it, it allows you as you're percolating the plan it allows those who are participating with you to buy in right? They're actually contributing. If you want to stick with your coffee analogy, you know, they're bringing some of the, the grounds uh, into the process so that it's going to be a unique blended cup of coffee that would be different, whereas if it was just you. So I'm a big team kind of guy from the very beginning, process from the very beginning. Let's get everybody in, the, in there and let's see what it is that God wants to do. Now, again, as the leader, you're setting some of the parameters and the boundaries of it. You've got kind of that overall picture, but people are contributing to that to that recipe. Another another metaphor that would work is when you make a cake, it takes eggs and oil and water, mm -hmm. flour, uh, and it takes all these ingredients. And it and it actually, the sum of the parts is greater. Uh, than, than what you started out with. And it's you can't take that egg back out. You can't take the water back out. You now have a cake. Same thing when you're starting a ministry or a startup business or community development uh, entity that it's going to be uh, a, a, a collaboration of, of those individuals that you've invited into that process and in, especially then with that prayer percolating that's happening, 
it's going to turn out totally different, I would say to you, than even you're envisioning it turning out. Now, one of the things that, that I'm hearing you say in, in, in this process is that it's crucial that you decide what you're going to do with what you have before you actually do it. And maybe that's the point of the planning process. What do you think about that? Uh, well, actually, so I, b before I would go there, uh, and I, I missed words. You said it's crucial that I what? You said something. I, I, it's crucial that you decide what you're going to do with what you have before you actually do it. You know, this is not a this is not a, a necessarily a spur of the moment thing, but there's some pre thought involved that makes planning effective. Uh, there, there is some pre-thought in that, and I, I do want to say I'm not a totally, uh, I, I'm probably some kind of a blend, and a, a number of the effective men and women that I've seen are a blend of, they're, they're not totally ready fire aim, uh, and they're not totally ready to aim fire. Uh, so there's definitely some building of the bridge as you're walking on it perspective, but it's a thoughtful, before I lay that piece of steel down, I've thought about why I'm laying that one there. Mm. Uh, and, and yet I am acting now. So there's constant movement that's going on. Some of that movement is more prayer and thought and conversation. It may be, we're just talking about it right now. And some people will get very frustrated with that percolating talking about it. And yet it is in that talking that I'm learning, I'm listening, and I'm actually inviting you into this planning process. Now, as I'm moving through, I'm, I'm checking off those decisions. We're putting in that into concrete there uh, on the wall or on the computer, whatever it is you're storing, that you're starting to craft this overall plan. Uh, so you're moving, but uh, you may not be doing the things you thought you'd be doing on day one, but there is action that's actually happening. Okay, I, I, I like that. I like that uh, that balance, that blend. What's the right balance between ready, fire, aim, and ready, aim, fire? Oh, I don't know. That's such an art. <laughs> I would. Uh, uh, let me say this. So, so I think again, I laid out those steps in the chapter for a reason. And 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 my first, the, the way I encourage people to do is to look at where God is calling you. And so, uh, I really challenge people to begin with the who and the where. Uh, and so uh, so if you want to be a ready, uh, you know, kind of fire aim guy, then do the firing and simply going into the community. Hmm. Do, do, do your action and starting to learn and becoming the expert on your community because that's never going to hurt you. So get out of your office, get out of your house, and let's go meet the people that God has placed around you. Get to know them. And that's going to take a while. Now, if you're indigenous to that particular community or that area, obviously you have years or decades of knowing that area and knowing those people. But if you're in a transient area or let's say you're in an urban setting that the population has changed on you repeatedly, even though you grew up there, you may no longer know that community and you need to know it. You need to get to know the values, the loves, the passions, the, uh, the seasonal change that happens there, the natural rhythms of that particular geography. Uh, so the, the first thing I ask uh, people that I work with that are starting, I just want to know. So tell me, about, tell me about where you are, where God is planted, and tell me about the people that God has planted around you. Mm -hmm. And if I ask you a number of questions and you can't answer me, then before you do anything else, before you say, well, this is what I want to do here, uh, I want to understand that that you know who you're going to be doing it with and for, uh, because w your what may not even work. So well, I always start with that who and that where, uh, and that that includes asset mapping. It includes need mapping, but it really is just getting to know the people that are there. Well, tell me, take us back to when you were uh, ramping up to start Crosspoint, and how you, even though you were a Texas native. You weren't a Katy, Texas native. How how did you get to know the people that were present in Katy at that time? Uh, it, it really is getting involved in the community. And rather than, quote, uh, starting your business or starting church or starting or whatever it is you're going to start, you start by simply uh, making friendships, relationships, uh, getting to know who are the 
those who make the decisions in the community, sitting down with the school superintendent, the mayor, the fire chief, uh, visiting the school that your children go to, really getting to know the teachers, the principal, and not only, not just like, hey, what's your name, but uh, I always used a, a series of questions with people. I always wanted to know what their heart was. So tell me as principal of school, what do, you, what, do you hope, what do you hope to see here in the next year, the next couple of years? And what you find that if you can get to know the hearts of those people who are leading in the community, uh, you really get to see from a first article standpoint, uh, more than likely uh, where God's probably going to be leading that community because the people that are uh, that he's allowed to be in control, that's where they want to go. So, you know, getting to know the leaders, uh, getting involved, again, depending upon your season in life, uh, if, if you're younger and if you're married and if you have children, then getting involved in those ch children events. You can, you can coach their basketball, their soccer, even if you don't play. Uh, you can get involved in scouts. Uh, you can get involved in their music lessons or their dance studios. You can volunteer. Uh, really, in that opening season, it's kind of putting yourself in the shoes of the very people you're going to try to reach. So live their life, you know, walk their rhythm, participate in the things they participate in so that you can understand that community. And you're right, I grew up in Central Texas. Uh, if you grow up in the 35 corridor on Central Texas, and Houstonians are going to hate this, but we always considered Houston was part of Louisiana. You know, it really wasn't part of Texas. Uh, and and I, had, I had, it's true, I had only lived in Texas, I had only been to Houston one time, and that was in college. Uh, and, and then when I met my wife, and I would go over to visit in Texas, in Houston. But so when we moved back, ironically, my wife was from, maybe not ironically, she was from the suburbs of Houston. But Houston was radically different. It's, uh, as, as you might know, it's now the most ethnically diverse city in the United States. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the oil and gas, oil and gas runs Katy, Texas. Energy runs Katy, Texas. Uh, the school district runs Katy, Texas. Sports run Katy, Katy High School Tigers. I mean, this is one of the top high school football teams, you know, in the nation, right? So yeah, there, there's something, uh, there's an adage that I, I tell people too, you can't reach a people that you hate. Mm. And, and so if you're going to reach your community for Jesus before you ever do anything, you need to figure out how you're going to love your community, how you're going to love the people that are around you. And, and I see this at times happen where, where men and women are, play, or, you know, they find themselves in an area and maybe they want to they, they wanna so change the culture in their community that that, uh, that becomes their end all and be all. Uh, and and it, it actually hinders them from reaching that community. So it's it's really important that you you get to know them first, that you understand why they love what they love, and and not only why they love what they love, but could you love what they love? Uh, are you willing to love it, mm -hmm. unless it's just antithetical to Jesus, right? But uh, so much of what we would say is perhaps it really isn't. Uh, so anyway, that's that's where I would start you. Uh, and that's, uh, I would just get you out there and I would be asking who you met today. Why did you go see that person? Why did you not go see that individual? Uh, and just get you out there learning uh, what the rhythms are in your, in your neighborhood. You know, and, and I, I love the, I love that last little piece about loving the thing that your neighbors love, that the people you're trying to reach love. Cause, cause that sets up the very next, uh, um, the next statement. And <clears throat> that is, Tell me why you'd want to start something new here in this particular location. That that flow, it seems to me that flows really nicely out of who and where, but it's not maybe necessarily a direct line, especially if you're thinking you've got to fix something. So what's behind the whole idea of tell me why? So so whereas tell me who and where is outside of you, tell me. Why? Uh, I'm not really listening for why you what you want to fix out there. I'm listening more for for what uh, what Jesus has poured into you for for why you love those people. Uh, what is it about that's going to make you a good fit for this particular area? 
that God, that Jesus has put you. So, you know, we would we would say if we're looking into some foreign country and you've been placed in that foreign country. So tell me how how why are you called to that particular people? Help me understand that before I'm going to invest in you, before uh, I, I I'm going to see this happen in your life. Tell me why. I want to just get your heart. So this is where I start really kind of pulling out those those values that you have that are going to mingle and fit with the values of that community. I want to hear the passion. You know, I want to hear the story that moved you from from taking the safe road with the, you know, the guaranteed salary and and uh, the security and all that. So now all of a sudden, what moved you to diverge from that and you're going to take a leap and you're going to you're willing to jump. You're going to risk. Why? Why would you risk on this group of people? in this location that's what i want to hear so so uh, i mean i'm getting some some, some comments and some, some uh, well not really pushback but just sort of expanding the conversation the, and the general theme here is why isn't this the first tell me why statement because doesn't it have to start internally well we're now if you remember in the book passion started a while back so we're mm -hmm. now we're now past the passion step. So you, you can't take this out of context, all right? So I'm assuming you've been praying about this. I'm assuming that there's something in you that kind of bubbled up, all right? That that kind of moved you off, uh, and and we're now and then and then you know we're now into this whole planning. So you have landed in some area, but but rather than me starting with with your why. I'm trying to discern that you know and understand the who and the what first. Because your why may be just fantastic, but it may not be the best why for the area that God has placed you in. Uh, th there's the triad of people, place, and plan. Okay, people, place, and plan. Th that triad needs to come together. So we're talking about the plan. Part of it is discerning that the place... You understand the place you are. I'm listening for the why to make sure that this stuff is all going to wrap together again. And plus, if I if I if I start with the who and the where, and I'm coaching you, uh, it's keeping you focused on the, the what's important. It's not your stuff. Jesus is important, but your stuff is, should come second to the. Who and the wonder them. You're here to support them. You're here to reach them. But your values and your stuff is secondary. And that's why I put it second in the list. Okay. I think I, I can appreciate that. And understanding the, the people around you that really need that connection to Jesus, that puts uh, first priorities in the first position. Uh, and I can that's appreciate right. that. You know, so, so if, if you want to push back a little bit on what Bill's saying, or you want to engage Bill or, or ask a question about some of these co core ideas for planning, uh, this is the place to do it. Use the Twitter hashtag 52Live, just like you see it uh, reflected on your screen. F-I-V-E, the number two, L-I-V-E, that would be most excellent. Or you can, uh, we're monitoring that. Uh, operators are standing by, Twitter operators, uh, Twitter Twitterators uh, are, are standing by to... Uh, to take your comment and make sure that we wrestle with it in this conversation. You can also turn on the uh, the Google Q&A app, which is available on the left-hand side of your screen. And that is uh, another way for you to put your uh, comment into the conversation to uh, wrestle with some of the things that Bill is uh, putting out for our conversation this afternoon. So definitely would uh, love to hear your voice in the conversation about the priorities of planning. So. We go, tell me um, who and where, tell me why, and then eventually you get around to tell me what. What's behind that question? Uh, well, it, really, that's the whole mission of, of what you're going to be doing. So you've got this better picture of the community, of the people that got us placed there, and you've proven to me you really know who those people are. You understand their heart, their needs, their wants, their desires. And you've become the expert on the community. And then you tell me what's in you. And, and we're asking you a series of questions to kind of pull that out of you. And now I'm, we're understanding what makes you tick, why you're taking the risk 
your family's on you know, are they on board with it, et cetera, et cetera. What are those things you value? And and that really, those are gonna help shape this entity or this ministry that's that's moving forward. And we wanna understand do the values and passions and uh, desires of the community, how they're either going to conflict with or they're going to commingle with your values mm. and especially this value of Jesus. But the what then becomes uh, the mission. The what then is what your new work is going to be about. Uh, this is where everything starts to take take a flesh. Mm -hmm. This is where the, the bones get some flesh on them and the, the head gets some hair on it. And you're telling us if it's going to be a blonde hair or you know a brunette or whatever it may be uh, and so so when you have this this mission we want to now start talking about what it is that you see doing and what it's going to look like and who it is you're going to be reaching and and exactly uh, we're going to get to it in a while the how part but we want to just understand what it's going to be so if you look in Exodus chapter 3 verse 10 for instance God gave Moses this mission and he said, I am sending you to bring my people out of Egypt. So mm -hmm. very, very clear. That's what Moses was called to do. So we then have a dialogue with you. We want you to be thinking about what is that, that what. Uh, United States Marine Corps, that, that mission's pretty cool to engage the enemy and destroy him. That's, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty that's basic. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, Pretty straightforward. And that's really then we want to really work with you and, and saying, what is this mission that's now the, the the coming together of your community and who you are? Now, I, I, like, the, I like the whole core idea or the core setup here, Bill, that, that mission has to be easy to get your mind around. You know, one of the things that, that you wrote in, uh, in the book that that you actually said vision shouldn't require a ton of energy to grasp, but I don't think mission. I think mission is sort of that same way. That if you don't get it quick, what you're there to do, you're probably not in the right, uh, or not not exactly in the right track yet. Uh, or 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 am I putting words in your mouth? You know, I I, I do think uh, there's a a quickness that people want. There's an impatience that especially entrepreneurial types uh, kind of basically have. And so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, say it maybe as strongly as you're saying it. I would say more that if, it, if you're not there with it, don't give up on it. Uh, so that if you haven't articulated it yet, if you're not clear enough on it, you do need to get to clarity. Mm. Uh, the people who are with you, they need to be able to articulate. There needs to be clarity about what it is you're there to do. And the more simply you can state it in results, then the better. And so if you're not clear, uh, if you find yourself repeatedly encountering new friends and they say, well, what, you know, what is it you're about, you're, you're trying to do or whatever, and you cannot simply articulate it to people, then I would just say to you, you're not clear yet, and you need to keep working on it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you you're paralyzed doesn't mean you close your door and never come back out for two months until you do. Uh, you keep moving, but you understand, I'm not clear enough yet. So, and this is kind of almost where that percolating and that prayer yeah. really just kind of feeds over the whole time. It's, it's not linear, all right? They're happening at times together, but you're aware, I need to get clarity there. Once it's clear, once I can see it, once I can print it out, once our team understands our mission and our purpose, why we're here, what we're here to do, then I can I can move on and build on it. Yeah, I, I, and I like that idea that that mission and vision sometimes do iterate, and sometimes it, it's perfectly okay if it takes you six tries to get it right to to say you know what we're, we're right here where Jesus would have us be, and the community is responding. That's totally okay. In fact, that's probably a good thing if you keep at it until, until that confirmation from the spirit and confirmation from the community happens in a, in a specific way. But how do you know when you have it? Again, I would say it's through confirmation uh, of, of your group, of your team, of your individuals. It's, it's you hopefully have a few counselors. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's a, a mentor type person. There is some confirmation in your spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. 
He's present in you. Jesus is present in you. So there's some praying and discerning. Uh, there's some repeatedly going back and looking at it again and again. And does this still ring true? Mm. Uh, is this still what we're being called to do? So <laughs> it's, it's not a once, you know, boom, you're done. I've checked it off my list. I'm moving on. Uh, it, it truly is a, a, a recurring and, and repeating uh, going back to it, looking at it, but verifying it with those around you. And let me just say, uh, uh, for those, you know, if, if you're in 5.2, if you're a part of, of, of our network, uh, we exist to fuel sacrament entrepreneurs who start new to reach new. So we are here to, to that's our mission, that we're here to help those sacramental uh, starters start new ministries to reach new people and you're a sacramental meaning that uh, you you believe in the presence of Jesus mysterious presence of Jesus in the sacraments but that same presence of Jesus by the Word of God mm. is also present in you and it's moving you along and so basically at the end of the day your your mission your what is gonna is gonna really aim to have the same result of making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the disciples of yourself. Uh, that's our mission. But but because of your community, because of the people you're trying to reach, because of your unique Psalm 139 design, your particular mission, your particular what is going to look a little different than Bill Woolsey's would or Jonathan mm -hmm. Wright's would. Uh, uh, but it's going to fall under this big umbrella of making disciples, making followers of Jesus through baptism and through teaching. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and that's part of, I think that's part of what, uh, you know, that Philippians passage about uh, work out your own faith with fear and trembling. That's part of understanding, hey, if you're called to start this thing, it's going to look different than what my calling might look like or Bill's calling might look like or, or you know, some other person. And that's a, that's a danger zone. All right. The, the, the next one is tell me the future. Talk to me a little bit about what you're learning in that process. Well, then that truly is a visioning process. And the reason I put it farther down the pipe is, is because I, it should be a natural outcome of the people, the location, what what Jesus has put into you, uh, what he's calling you, your group to be about in that particular community. And then it really is a question of where is he calling you to? Uh, what is he calling you to in the future? Uh, have, you, have you thought about it? Have you prayed about it? And this is more maybe strategic planning as well would be a part of this, mm. that you really start to just lay out uh, what you believe that future is going to look like. And, and some, some individuals get hung up on this and they think, well, I'm not Jesus or I'm not God, and that's pretentious of me to do that. And, and we're certainly not saying that you uh, pretend you are or you believe that you can see the future somehow. That's, that's not what we're saying. Rather, we're really kind of going and saying, okay, Jesus, if you would give us the desires of our heart as we follow you, as we place ourselves under submission to your will in this community. Uh, we'd love to just dream about what could be, uh, what kind of work could you do here? And then I mm. encourage the individual or the group, let's go ahead and map that out. Let's start praying about that. Again, it's not for our glory, it's for the glory of Jesus, but why not dream? Why not envision what God could do in a good way to make his name even more honored and more praised uh, in, in your area? You know, I, I love that idea because the, the planning process with that mindset behind it becomes a process of, yeah, conversation, but also quiet because you have to listen mm -hmm. to what the Spirit's up to in order to make sense at all. You, ha you have to give the Spirit some room to actually speak and, and I guess, and be heard would, would, be, an, would be another piece of the puzzle. How, how do you do that well? How do you listen well in a planning process? Uh, again, this planning process is not one day or a two-day retreat or whatever. What we're talking about here is truly as you as you hit the ground and you're starting to learn, it's it's months long. This mm. whole this whole process is months long. And so that visioning truly is as you're moving around the community, as you're getting to know people, as you're asking questions like, you know, what what's missing in this community? If you could snap your fingers and God would provide what 
thing in this community what would it be and you're, you're just thinking about that praying about you're talking with individuals and you're really seeing who who you are and the resources God has given you and how how that's all going to come together uh, so there is this sitting and resting uh, it's a it's a meditative process throughout and I think this is why the sacramental part of this is often overlooked and yet is so rich hmm. it, there, there ought to be a, a meditative component to your every day there ought to be a quiet component to your every day in, in some capacity where you don't have music blaring in your ears you know you're not exercising constantly listening to something else you're exercising maybe just thinking and praying uh, there's there's time for no other noise to be put into your head or your soul besides what Jesus has already put in your head that's a, an important ingredient in this developmental process hmm. I, I, I like that 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 you know the contemplative component of the planning process really shouldn't be overlooked I think that's a that that that's one that uh, you know just speaking as a guy who's got some of these uh, um, sacramental entrepreneurial tendencies I want to blow through the contemplative side and what I'm taking away from you in this in, in this process is don't because there's a value there that you really can't get at any other point in the planning process. No, uh, again, if you go back to that early on uh, metaphor, you only get to spend you know a dollar once. Uh, then, then it, as I'm thinking about this and praying about this and and really praying over this, hmm. as I'm consulting and just listening, there there should be a huge part of listening. Uh, throughout this process and mm. and the entrepreneur it's why we marry sacramental and entrepreneur that entrepreneur is the you might almost say it's the it's the go 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 maybe the me 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 and I don't want to stress that maybe overstress that but that sacramental is the Jesus 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 uh, listen 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 deep 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 and so we want that to be balanced out and and you can't ever they want to live in tension. We want them to live in tension with that. Yeah, I, I like that because that, that really is the challenge of leadership that starts a new venture. You know, me, 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 go, go, go with Jesus, 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 probably in the other order. But but that 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 exactly. that tension, that balance, I think that's what we're after here, man. That's that that's what makes the difference. And 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 really, actually, you said probably. It, it's 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 our it's our true north it's our default because of our brokenness mm. and we want to make sure that you 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 really work to elevate that sacramental that you as you mature in your leadership as you mature in your following of jesus you're 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 lessening that me 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 it's never going to go away but you're really resting in that sacramental the presence of christ in you and in the community that you're leading you know, we're circling right back to that. He must increase and I must decrease whole entire conversation. That's a, that, that's a beautiful thing. All right. Coming out of tell me the future, we get into the nuts and bolts. We get into tell me how, what, what's included in that part of the plan. And that really is the strategies now. Uh, these are the actual steps you're going to take. So again, it's saying this is the community. It's the people God has called me to. He's placed me here. I, I now know them. I love them. I know how they tick. I could guess the answers to their questions. This is who I am. This is what God has poured into me. I need to be aware of that. Where do where does where do I conflict with who He's called me to? What am I willing? What's that mission? Where are you? Where you believe that Jesus is calling you? And then what are the steps that? that we're going to put into place to start moving in that direction. Go. There's flexibility in this because as I'm laying out those strategies, he may be shifting, the community may change, as we all know it will change to some degree or another over time. Mm -hmm. But how then, uh, what are those strategies that we're putting into place? And it, it's everything. And this, again, there's a lot here. It's, it's uh, from the marketing to the community building to how do we make sure the, uh, the community even knows what it is we're going to be doing. How are we 
How are we out there with them? What, what are the people that we need? What is the funding? Huge. We could double click on funding for a long time. Mm -hmm. How are we going to make sure that that uh, somebody's paying attention to the home base as we're out and about and building? So uh, lots of entities there uh, in that strategy in that strategy part, both external, internal resources uh, that all play into, be, into, into being. Now, most of the time when we think about planning, this is what we think about. We think about the, the, the written strategies, getting things down on paper so that everybody knows where they are and what's important to them. We're talking about managing the nuts and bolts of the plan and then implementing the plan. But in, in the way you make your argument, this comes pretty far down the list. What's the thinking behind all of this being so front end loaded with with other activity? Uh, because it, if you let's just say you started with the how. Okay. If you if you start with the how, you are you are quite myopic. Mm. Uh, you, you're not seeing the whole uh, picture of what what Jesus is doing all around you. It almost makes you central to this effort rather than letting Jesus, his resources, his calling, the people he loves. He loves those people more than you love those people. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than making all of that centric, uh, if you start with the how, you, you're, you're, you're getting it bass backwards, and you are, in effect, then uh, not going to have as full and rich of a, of a ministry or a, a start as it could be. So really by putting it how, it forces you. It, it, it builds in this patience. It builds in this uh, studiousness that you really get to know that community. You really have thought through uh, who you are in Jesus before you ever start saying, well, we're going to do X, Y, Z. Uh, the 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 anti-human guardrails or the protection <laughs> from, from ourselves. Yeah. You know, I, had, I hadn't thought about that until just this moment is – is you're right the order that you've got this in guards against this being about me what are some other strategies that i can use in my planning processes to ensure that it's not all about me it can be a little about me i think but it it's gonna it's gonna by nature it's by nature uh and, I, and maybe that's too strong of a statement but generally by nature it's going to have plenty of you <laughs> Let's put it that way, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're an entrepreneurial individual. It'll have plenty of, of, of Jonathan flavor in the mix. Uh, but really, by then, spending that time on the front end, uh, before you jump straight into the how, it makes sure that the plenty of you and the flavor that you're bringing to it is, uh, is going to be supporting and serving rather than uh, front and front and center and getting the glory mm. because again the, the issue is the glory it belongs to Jesus it belongs to his church and, and it last of all would belong to you yeah for sure and, and that that's the kind of thing that I, I love in the in the central uh, in the sacramental entrepreneur development process I mean this is the key distinctive this is the thing that sets these guys apart from your standard average everyday garden variety entrepreneur is that yeah, it's not about them. They're not going all Donald Trump on it and setting up a run for president. This is a venue to pass the glory on to Jesus, which is how it's supposed to be. You know, I, 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 one, 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 more, one more just push on that. What's your best advice for confirming, checking and confirming that the, uh, uh, it really is about Jesus and not about you? My, my best advice would be to, uh, for you to, besides time and besides uh, counsel, plural, would be for you to really avail yourself of someone who has walked in your shoes mm. and that you have seen some success with. And by success, uh, probably the better word is effectiveness. So they have, they set out to do something and they succeed in doing that and reaching the people they were trying to reach for the sake of Jesus mm. so I would I would avail yourself not of someone who's written a great book about it not of someone who's taught a great course about it but someone who has done it and 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 then I would say use them as your sounding board 
and trust them as your sounding board. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like I like that. So when you call Bill to ask for uh, advice about starting, mention the fact that he started other things in the past. Don't rely on the fact that Seven Steps to Start is a terrific book to uh, to sharpen you moving forward. Rely on the fact that Bill has been there and, and done that uh, moving forward. So that's just something to to factor into the conversation. Now, now, it, go ahead, Bill. Well, I was just going to say, you'll be surprised the number of men and women who have uh, gone before you mm. that you admire. You'll be surprised how much they would they would be honored by your call. Yeah, they would be honored by your reaching out. And yeah. I think so often, and I'm not talking about going, you know, to the, you know, to the to the the the, the uh, Obamas of the world or, or whatever, or the Bushes of the world, whatever you want to say, you know, it's not that you're, you're going to go all the way to the inaccessible. There are so many other people who are accessible, who have done it, that mm -hmm. if you would simply avail yourself, call, reach out and say, hey, uh, could I have 15, 20 minutes of your time? Uh, you'll, you'd be surprised by how many would say, sure. I'm, I'm, always, I'm always amazed at how, pe how generous people are with their time when I'm seeking their counsel. Yeah, I think I think that's good. That's good advice. You know, wanting to learn from the road that someone has been on is a hugely well. It's empowering on both sides. It 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 endorses everything that the the experienced person has accomplished, and that makes them more likely to want to share that with you. So that I I I, I agree with. I would affirm that. So, last set of questions. The last tell me why, tell me that you that you list out in the book is tell me why again. Why do we revisit this one? Because the passion that Jesus has put in you, uh, which is that combination of values and, and, and your uh, particular personality, style, and wiring, there will be many times that uh, you'll, uh, you'll, want to, you'll want to set everything aside. Or, or let me just say it this way. If, it's, if it doesn't flow strongly from a why, from who you are, it'll be very easy to set it all aside. Mm. It, it would be easier to, to not get up and go to work that day. Uh, because again, as a sacrament entrepreneur, there's ultimately usually not some boss over you that's telling you you have to do. You're your own person. You're, there's motivation that's flowing from Jesus in you out to others. So uh, it's very important that that why is present. And we just want to hear that again. One more time. Why are you here? Why did you sell your house and move to this community? Why is your wife having to get a new job? Why are you going to put these kids in a new school? Uh, it, because there's going to be pain and risk and suffering. Uh, help me understand again that, that there's going to be some gumption that's going to see you through. Mm. Mm. What is it about the Sacramental entrepreneur that makes them want to do hard stuff? I, again, I, I, I see this as, as Jesus wiring people that he knows to get things started. It's going to take a certain amount, a certain style of personality. Uh, and uh, hmm. gosh, on hand, and, and maybe not to push this too hard, but that's just the way Jesus has made certain people. And he's made them for a reason. And our desire in 5.2 is to help them discover that and to affirm that, that entrepreneurial spirit as actually something that will help the church grow. It will lead to more people knowing Jesus. Mm. Amen. Amen. And, and that, that, that makes the, gives a perspective to doing hard things that, that I think makes it not mm -hmm. just about today, but about uh, you know, forever, eternity. And that uh, that sets us up for a uh, a pretty powerful conversation. All right, as we as we wrap up this topic of of planning, what what are your top three things that you know you want to say to people that we haven't said already about making sure that your plan works for what you want to start? I, I would say that uh, first of all, when you're doing the planning process, again, it doesn't mean you're just sitting at home and and not. Uh, not doing anything else. It doesn't mean you're just sitting in an office and not doing anything else. Uh, this is is this this whole step is done in conjunction. And actually, if you think about it, multiple pieces of the steps of this step 
have you out and about and learning and growing mm -hmm. and talking. And so there's action orientation there. Uh, and, and what I would say to you is take your time here. Mm. Uh, it's okay that you, that you take time and build this out well. Mm -hmm. Because there is action that's happening. You are getting to meet people. You are out there talking about what God's calling you to do. Uh, and so you're moving around. And yet we want you to be purposeful and thoughtful as you lay that out. So I, that's probably the, the big thing that I would, I would tell people. Don't worry that it's taking months uh, or, or a year or whatever it is as you, as you start to go forward with this. Mm, yeah, that's a good that's a good word is that that planning does take time and it does take people and it does take iterations to get the plan right. That's a that's a great set of observations about why this process mm -hmm. is so crucial for a sacramental entrepreneur looking to make a kingdom difference. All right, uh, Bill, uh, final part of our all network call for the month of June 2015. Why don't you wrap us up with a word of prayer? Thanks, Jonathan. Father, we thank you for the opportunity again to, to just come together and talk and dream about your church, mm -hmm. the steps that you're calling us to take as we reach new people for you. And Father, as the men and women of the network, as you have placed uh, your spirit in them and you're calling them to start new ministries and reach new people, I pray that you would give them confidence, boldness, courage. Uh, most of all, Father, that you would remind them of the baptism of who they are in Jesus and how that new identity, that new relationship uh, prepares them and propels them out into the world on your behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bill Woolsey is the uh, founding leader of 5-2. He's also the author of the book, Seven Steps to Start, that we're working through on these network calls. Thanks for your wisdom, your insight, and your comments uh, this afternoon. Appreciate it, Bill. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, oh, you bet. You bet. Next month on the All Network Call, we're going to continue working our way through uh, seven steps to start. This was the, the third of the seven steps, and we focused on planning. Next month, people. That, of course, will happen on the third Thursday of, uh, of uh, July, and we'll dive into the details of uh, people. How do you get the right people connected to your ministry, your, your new start, that thing that's going to start new, to reach new. My name is Jonathan Wrights. Thanks for watching the All Network Call. We'll see you next month.